In this video, we're going to go through everything you need to know about cover in Marvel Crisis Protocol. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well and welcome back to another little brief tutorial video. After I did my line of sight video last week, loads of you started asking for little tidbit videos on some other aspects of the game. And the one that people were really shouting out for was around cover in Marvel Crisis Protocol. It was already on my list of things to do, but I promised somebody I'd get it out this week. So here we go. So, cover in Marvel Crisis Protocol. And we have to treat it a little bit like we did with the line of sight, whereby um, you almost need to forget everything that you've learnt from any other miniatures game or any other tabletop game previously, because it does work in a very, very different way. Um, and yeah, like I say, in this video, we'll go through everything that you need to know about it. So let's start by just getting a definition as to what cover is. And if you've got cover, what you need to be able to do to achieve that. So let's have a look, quick look at the rules. So it says, during the modify defense dice step of an attack, a defending character benefiting from cover, from terrain or otherwise, may change the result of one defense die to a block. Now, <clears throat> important there that it is only during a defense dice. You don't gain cover from anything like throws or anything else like that. So it is just purely when you're having an attack made against you. And the important thing here is that it is part of the modify defense dice step. So cover in Marvel Crisis Protocol is deemed as dice modification. Now I'm gonna be putting another video together that goes through the timing of dice modification and that sort of thing. But all you need to know is you need a dice available to you to be able to change. So if you're rolling three defense dice, for example, and you roll three blocks, you're getting no additional benefit from cover. That cover doesn't give you a fourth block. Equally, if you roll two blocks and a failure, because for the most part, you cannot modify those failures, then again, you're not going to be able to turn that failure dice into a block. There's also a couple of other examples that can stop you from being able to modify your dice. And we'll go through a couple of examples of those further on in the video. So how do we actually gain cover as a character? Well, there are a number of requirements, but there are actually two different ways that you can gain cover. So let's cover off the, no pun intended, terrain one first, and then we'll go into some of the other ways that you can benefit from cover. So terrain features uh, can provide you cover, um, but there's a number of different um, requirements that must all be met uh, before you can actually benefit from that cover. So first of all, the defender must be within range one of a terrain feature of the same size or larger. So a little bit like when we did the uh, the line of sight. Um, so you can be a size two character stood behind a size two building, still have line of sight, but also you're going to benefit from cover of that. It's also important to note that you can be stood on top of that piece of terrain feature as well. But again, that piece of terrain needs to be the same size or larger. So the second requirement is that a straight line can be drawn from any portion of the attacker's base to any portion of the defender's base through the terrain feature. So in the same way that if a tiny little portion of our base is sticking out for line of sight, if the slightest portion of our base is behind cover in any way, shape or form, then we're going to benefit from that cover. And lastly, is that the attacker is not within range two of the defender. So the cover that is given from terrain disappears the moment that the attacker is within range two, irrespective of what things may or may not be in the way. So let's have a quick look then at a couple of examples of cover from terrain and how it would work. 
Okay then guys, so welcome to our first example. And you can see that once again, we've got the little trash panda causing his problem. So Rocket Raccoon is looking to make an attack into Crossbones using his range five builder. Well, we can see that he's more than in range five, so that's absolutely fine. However, we can see there is a size two piece of terrain in between Crossbones and Rocket. And size two is the same size as Crossbones. And you can see that any part of Crossbones base and any part of Rocket's base will pass through there. However, in this example right now, Crossbones has positioned himself quite badly. Therefore, Rocket is able to make an attack into Crossbones and Crossbones wouldn't benefit from cover for the pure reason that he's not within range one of the terrain that would potentially be giving him the cover. Okay, the attack happens. Rocket manages to get a couple of damage through onto Crossbones. And as we all know, Crossbones has the ability aggressive. Now that aggressive lets him make a short advance. So he is going to make his short advance and just move up to here. Now Rocket will make the same attack again into Crossbones. Once again, we know that he's within range. We know that we have the size two piece of terrain and we know that it's the same size as Crossbones so it could potentially give him cover. And because now Crossbones has moved up to within range one of the piece of terrain, he is going to benefit from cover and be able to change one of those dice into a block. Okay, the Trash Panda is at it again and this time he has two targets in his sight. We have got Crossbones and Sabretooth both stood atop this size two piece of terrain. Now, which one of these characters is going to benefit from cover and why? Well, if you were to say Sabretooth and the reason he was gaining cover is because he stood behind Crossbones, unfortunately, that isn't correct. Just in the same way that characters can't block line of sight in this game, they also can't provide cover to any other characters as well. Also, Sabretooth is stood on top a size two piece of terrain, and he is actually a size three model. Even though he's on a small base, it does catch some people out. So in this instance, Sabretooth would not gain any cover. So let's take a look at Crossbones and see if he would benefit from the cover. Let's go through those rules again. So first of all, is he either being stood behind or being any part of his base blocked by a piece of terrain that is the same size as him or higher? Then absolutely yes, he stood on top of this. So as we know, that counts. So big tick box there. And then the second one is, is Rocket Raccoon within range two? Well, as we can see using our range two ruler, He's outside of range two, albeit only just. So in this instance, absolutely, Crossbones is going to benefit from that cover. So next up, we have got Sabretooth, who is going to make an attack into Luke Cage. And let's do those quick checks and see if we're going to benefit from cover or not. So first of all, is there a piece of terrain in the way between them that you can draw any line through from either of the bases? Well, absolutely, we can see it stood right in the middle of the pavement there, very inconsiderate of, uh, of the Sorcerer Supreme to put this outside his house. Um, so yes, he, th there is a piece of terrain in the way. Second of all, is Luke Cage within range one of that terrain? Well, as we can see, absolutely within range one. And then the last check is, is the attacking character within range two. So let's take a look at that. And as you can see, Sabretooth is well within range two of Luke Cage. So in this example, Luke Cage is not going to benefit from any cover whatsoever. Okay, so for this part of terrain, I want to end on this example because it is one that catches quite a few people out. So the dump truck has moved around the corner, as you can see, the fight has escalated, and somehow the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy, Star-Lord, has got involved and he is fighting against Luke Cage. So let's take a look. Both characters are size two, and they are stood atop a size four piece of terrain, and Star-Lord wants to use his uh, elemental gun attack and shoot into Luke Cage. So. Is he in range? Well, absolutely he's in range, not a problem at all. We've got line of sight, so no issue there. 
But in this scenario, do we think that Luke Cage is benefiting from cover? Well, once again, let's go through the rules and see if or not he would. So, first of all, is Luke Cage within range one of a piece of terrain that uh, is either the same size or bigger than him? Well, absolutely, because he stood atop it and we know that that already counts. Rule number two, can Star-Lord draw a line from any part of his base to any part of Luke Cage's base that would pass through the terrain? Well, yes, we can, because we're going through the terrain here. Even though Star-Lord is stood on top of it, it's still deemed as being passing through the terrain. And then lastly, is Star-Lord within range two of Luke Cage? Well, you can see that Luke Cage is, albeit only just, but outside of range two. So as strange as it may seem, in this example, even though both characters are stood atop the same size piece of terrain, unfortunately for Star-Lord, Luke Cage is going to benefit from that cover. So that's run through how you gain cover from terrain, but as I mentioned, there are a number of other ways to gain cover in this game, and they really come in three flavors. They can either be um, unique abilities or abilities that are on a character's um, character stat card. They can be tactics cards that characters can play, or they can be crisis cards. And I'll run through a couple of examples. So let's go back to the lovable Trash Panda once again. We can see on his card, he has the innate superpower, small stature, that says this character always benefits from cover. Now, something that catches a lot of people out is that they think that once they're within range two of Rocket, they're going to remove that cover. That is not the case. Um, the only way that you remove cover by being within range two is if it's cover from terrain. So all of these examples that I'm going to go through, the rule of two does not apply. We then take a look at a card like Magnetic Refraction, where Magneto basically spends two power and gives everybody, including himself, within range three cover. So anyone in that bubble is going to be um, benefiting from cover. Obviously, they need to have the dice to be able to do it. And then lastly, as an example, we've got the sort of newer crisis, superpowered scoundrels form Sinister Syndicate. Characters contesting an ambush token have cover from attacks made by characters not contesting the same ambush token. Um, so again, really, really important to make sure you understand when that rule of two is applied and indeed when it's not. Let's finish then by talking about other ways that cover can be negated. Now there are some really, really obvious ones. If we look at Captain America's shield thrower, for example, it clearly states on there that this attack ignores line of sight and the defending character does not benefit from cover. Now, it's really important, again, to point out uh, that as a rule of thumb, in fact, a hard, fast rule in this game, something that says you don't benefit always overrides something that says you do benefit. So, for example, Captain America doing a shield throw into Rocket Raccoon, for example, Rocket Raccoon will not benefit from cover, even though his card says otherwise. Cat's card overrides that. Similarly, you've got abilities like Iron Man's Repulsor Blast and some other ones out there that are very, very straightforward and it shows it on the card. However, there are a couple of characters, and I'll pick one out, that have the same effect, but they word it in a slightly different way. So let's take Venom, for example. Venom has the innate ability Symbiotic Instincts, and it reads... When this character is attacking, the defending character cannot modify their defense dice. And if we remember all the way back at the beginning of this video as to what cover is, cover is a modification of your dice. So even though it doesn't explicitly say that you cannot benefit from cover against Venom's attacks, because you can't modify dice, it encompasses everything that falls under that category, including the ability to benefit from cover. So again, just something to watch out for. 
And there we go, guys. That is our brief guide to cover in Marvel Crisis Protocol. Hopefully it's answered all of your questions. If you have any more, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you've got any other ideas or any other videos you want doing on rules clarifications in Marvel Crisis Protocol, just leave me a comment down in the, uh, the comment section below or reach out to me on Discord. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can put one together for you. Guys, if you've liked this video or it's been helpful in any way, shape or form, please leave a like. It really, really does help. And if you want to support the channel even further, then we do have our Patreon up and running where you can help us uh, support the channel. And as you maybe saw, some of the um, terrain that we've got at the moment, we're starting to or almost finish with the, uh, with the terrain board. Now we've got one quarter to finish off and then a little bit of painting and some sprucing up to do. But uh, all the donations that we get through the Patreon, Patreon goes towards supporting uh, making better content for the channel and a big shout out to all of those Patreon members who are already supporting us and are also taking part in our monthly Patreon exclusive event that we run where you can win uh, points for prizes, uh, you can turn those points for playing and participating games into rich mid gaming merch or indeed um, discounts at your local gaming stores as well. I mentioned the Discord. If you haven't joined it yet, head on over there and join the Discord. It's a really great place. Over 500 people on there now talking all things MCP. Plus, you'll find all of your other favourite content creators as well. Plus, we talk about all sorts of other things on there as well. Finally, guys, as always, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.